Offering Tree provides a robust set of contact management features. To access these features, click on Contacts under the Communications section. Once you're on the Contacts page, you'll notice a number of different options. To get started, you can begin by importing existing contacts. To do this, click on Import Contacts, and you'll notice that it asks you to find a CSV file on your computer. CSV file is a comma separated values file and it's a format that you can use with any of the existing um, applications that you might already have if it's Excel or uh, MailChimp or Google Sheets or some other program. Almost all of them will let you export your contacts to a CSV file as it's a common format. So once you've exported your um, contacts into a CSV file. All you have to do is click on Browse and find the file on your computer. So in this case, here it is, contacts.csv. I click on that, click Open, and you'll see that it pulls in the contacts for me. Now notice that um, it defaults to ignore column here, so I have to tell Offering Tree which of the columns it should import into my site. So at a minimum, I have to tell Offering Tree which column has the email addresses. So in this case, I'll select email since this is the column that has it. And I also want to select first name and last name. Now, I don't care about this other column because this is a, a column that maybe you know my other program was using. I don't need it. Similarly, I don't need this date information. So I can just leave those as ignore column. If I don't have email selected, then you'll notice that I don't have an import option. So you have to have email selected at a minimum in order to proceed. So once I hit import, you'll see that it says uploading, it's processing the files, and you'll see a progress bar. And now you'll see it says it imported three contacts, the progress bar is done, that means it was successful. All I have to do is hit close. And now when I look down, those contacts have now been highlighted, or not highlighted, but imported rather into um, my offering tree site. So now that I have contacts imported in my offering tree site, there's a couple different things I can do. If I want to search for contacts, um, this is clients or students that have taken a class with me or they've signed up for my newsletter or they've sent me a message from my website. If I want to find these individuals, all I have to do is start searching my contacts. So I can search um, using whatever criteria I want. So let's say I want to search with any contacts that have LO um, somewhere in uh, their um, information. In this case, you'll see that it pulls up these contacts because LO shows up in hello as part of the email address and it also shows up, for example, Lopez here, LO. So it's pulling up all contacts that meet that search rate criteria. If I wanted to find all um, you know, contacts that had AV, um, and then you'll see again it sorts those contacts immediately and since um, these three contacts have some combination of AV that's what the system is showing. So you can quickly search and um, find contacts that way. If you want to um, send a message uh, to contacts uh, you can do that a couple of different ways. Um, you can select individual names but let's say I want to send a message to only students that have signed up for one of the offerings. So I can filter my contacts by selecting those offerings. And notice when I filter it by mindfulness, it only shows me this one contact because this is the client that signed up for that offering. If I want to add another one in here, then you'll see that there were five people that signed up for this offering. So you can add different offerings and filter your contacts or you can remove by just simply clicking the small X next to it. Uh, but let's say in this case, I wanted to send a message to um, everyone that had taken my mindfulness or my intro to mindful yoga. So after I've used the filter criteria here at the top, I can click on this little uh, box here and this will select everyone that's uh, on this page. And you notice it says that there's um, five contacts that meet this description. If I needed to change how many people were on a page, I could do that and update that number here. And as soon as I've selected these contacts, you'll see that this new button appears. It says send a message to five contacts. So now I can click send a message and I could compose a message. And notice it shows me all of the recipients at the top here. 
let's say, mm, you know, I don't want to send a message to Rebecca. All I'd have to do is hit the X and it removes uh, that student from the recipient list. So then I would compose my message just like anything else. If it was a newsletter or a roster message or, or just an email, putting in the subject line here, putting in my text, formatting it however I want and adding any attachments that I might need. And then when I'm done, I could either send it right away or I could save it as a draft. If I wanted to send it in the future, I would just change the date here and that would save it um, or that would schedule it to be sent on a um, future date. So in this case, I'll go ahead and hit save as draft. Uh, it's asking me for a subject line. So I'll put this as uh, thank you. And then same here, I'll put this as thank you. Save it as a draft. And now it says the message has been created. So when I go back and um, go to my contact section, um, that's how you can send a message just by doing that. Now, let's say that um, you know I had lots and lots of contacts and I wanted to send it to a couple people so I can select one or two and I can advance to the next page of contacts and continue to select uh, students and notice that it's adding to those students. So if I go back to the first page, it still has the students I selected. So I can go through and add um, different people that I wanna contact just by manually doing that. And if I wanna add everyone that's on this one page, I would just click this and then it would show that it's actually adding everyone um, on this page as well as uh, the next page and into the final page. So this is a simple way to add everyone if you wanna do that by clicking on that. Now let's say you uh, get a message from a student and they say, you know, please unsubscribe me. Maybe they didn't click on the unsubscribe link in their email. In order to do that, all you have to do is click edit and you'll get options to unsubscribe from a newsletter or to delete. If you unsubscribe somebody from a newsletter, it means that they will still be in your offering tree site. It's just that they won't receive your newsletters. They still will receive transactional emails or if you've scheduled emails like a roster message, they'll still receive those, but they won't receive any future messages that you send out unless they resubscribe to your site. If you delete a contact, it means that they're no longer part of your offering tree site so that they won't be included in uh, any of your messaging or even in your transaction data. So, uh, you know, you want to decide whether you just want to unsubscribe them or delete them. You can always remind students that they can unsubscribe themselves by clicking on the unsubscribe link that comes from all of your communications that you send out. The last thing that I want to um, show you is that um, you can download your contacts. So if you want to download all your contacts, all you need to do is make sure the filter um, field here is blank and it'll download, you'll see uh, all of the contacts that I currently have on my site. If I wanna download a subset of those contacts, let's say I just wanna download those students that were part of my mindfulness uh, and intro to mindful yoga classes, then I select them here and notice that it's saying, oh, it'll only download these five contacts. So you can download everything in your offering tree site, all of your contacts, or you can download a portion of your contacts. You can also create a contact if you need to manually by doing that. Click the create contact button. You need to put in their name and their email address and then hit create. The last thing that I'll mention is that it's really important that you have permission to add people to your contacts. You can't just sign people up without their permission. In fact, there are laws that prohibit that. So please make sure that you have permission to add somebody to your database if you're manually adding them or importing them. So this is just a brief overview of how to use contacts and offering tree, and we look forward to seeing all that you have to offer.